love has a prize. Yeah. 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 Love, 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 love. They say author. They say podcasts on 300,000 downloads. Harvard University. They say all these great things. But 300,000 downloads. You travel in the country. All the good stuff. But they didn't tell you that for a year. I didn't even release any podcast episodes. Years. To do three classes, right? It's crazy. Long story, long story, long story. <laughs> but they don't say, my CEO lost $21,000 in a night. They don't say all that stuff. They say those things. And a lot of times we have this cult of entrepreneurship, innovation, everybody's rah, rah, rah. But it's something they don't say that really matters because guess what? If y'all don't get the funding, right? Even if they get five, ten thousand, it's gonna be what they don't say that's gonna go keep pushing it to other communities. It's gonna keep impacting culture. So I'm gonna talk about three things and I'll be quick that I see people clutching their purses and they break the dough. So I got y'all, right? Y'all deal with me. And we go, we go, uh, the timer, oh, we good. We're gonna make it, we're gonna make it right. So I got three things, right? And the first thing I want to say and mention is, what they didn't tell me about entrepreneurship and about life in general was that no is the most important word to hear. I love it. It's the best word you ever hear right No, no, no. And the reason why I know, because growing up, I hated the word no. I was the guy that when all the young guys used to hang out at the mall, I wouldn't approach no girls because I was, I was afraid of rejection, right? So I wouldn't say no. And then I was the guy that if I had to have the reality, hey, this is cool enough for me right now. I said, so let me double down on this podcast. Let me double down on speaking. Let me see, let me see where the gaps are. And then a couple months ago, I get called to go to Harvard University and give two presentations. I, I'm leading a workshop on storytelling. <laughs> like, hey. like, and a lot of times we initially hear the word no, we don't accept the changes that we need to make. Specifically, let's be honest, in our community, right? We get no, we get defensive, we get angry, we start to say, oh, no, 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 you didn't hear my product, you didn't hear how good the pitch was. But when you accept the no's, then you've got to see, okay, Maybe it's my value that needs to be changed around, right? Maybe it's the network, maybe it's the way I communicate. Maybe it's the resources that I'm looking for. Maybe I'm missing something. So the no allow you to make the changes in order to make it to the next situation. The second point I want to say, this is critical, specifically in this startup, a lot of times we can get lost in this entrepreneurship journey on trying to get more donations, trying to get more sponsors, trying to get all this stuff. But the people that we set on stage and say we want to serve, they get the least amount of value. They get the least amount of value. But I'm telling you, if you're focused on that one, one person, that one kid, that one person to get the haircut, that one incarcerated, you get the people to come to the games, right? But nobody comes. So they have all the visibility in the world. They have budgets through Facebook advertising, Instagram. They're a national football team, right? But nobody's coming because the value is <laughs> not there. So I want us to be critical. The key thing about value is, is a preference to realize. Always ask yourself, what am I giving before you ask what am I getting? Because I, I, I loved a lot of pitches, but I realized a lot of times when our pitches focus on company giving, donations, and kind goods, let's be real. A lot of times when we on the, when we on the stage, everybody's clapping up, but you know, that donation thing get a little dry in a couple weeks, right? <laughs> and feel right. The people that came to the mimosas and brunch after a month, they're like, oh, I don't got it now. I was like, but you crave wellness. You the person liking all the black girl magic stuff. Then why are you not showing up? So when we think about always ask ourselves, what are we giving to these companies that we want to give? Make sure our value proposition is what we are giving. Not saying competitions. People really care about themselves, right? So if we can focus our mind on what people are getting instead of what we're giving, then that'd, that'd be a great thing. And the last thing I'm gonna say before I get to my closing story, and this is uh, real critical for me and just everything that I do, is nobody ever told me to treat every opportunity every opportunity like it's my last opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Prepare for a 20-minute presentation and for 100 people, I take the same prep as if I'm doing an interview for an online magazine that maybe I have 100 views. <laughs> the same prep, the same intensity, the same thing, because like, guess what? Now, I started my journey four years ago as a public speaker. I wasn't getting paid a lot. I was doing a lot of free work, but I had a culture. Every time when you book ready, you may not respond on your emails, but when he there, Oh, he's on fire. He's 100% committed. After the show, he's taking pictures, he's answering questions, he's building those connections. And in some first, the first year, I didn't see results. Second year, I didn't see results. Third year, the results started trickling in. And then the fourth year, boom! That's when things change. That's how you go from $25 an hour, $25 to do three hour long presentations, to getting 5,000 for 40 minutes. All because of what, 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 what? I started valuing and taking every opportunity seriously. When I was young, that's why I tell my little brother, hopefully he's here. 
Um, Cause I gave him ten dollars to be here. I gave him gas money, so he better be here, right? <laughs> you know how little brother he is seeing here calling again. Like, hey, that man, ten dollars in gas money, and I don't, I, I don't think I see him. So I got words when I see him. <laughs> but he works at McDonald's, and he's always complaining about lack of opportunities, about funds. The reason why he's complaining about funds, he's a he's a rap artist and. I was like, yo, the last three months he's been recording music in my house because he doesn't have a microphone. I said, dude, the microphone costs $100. Like, what are you doing with your money, first of all? But he's always complaining. But guess what? I showed up at his work. He's on the drive through. Hey, how you doing? He's late to work sometimes. And I say, John, John the way white. If you take that same commitment, I hear you in, the, in my room at night when I'm sleeping on the couch because you're recording music for five hours all night going in on the booth. You take that same amount of that commitment to that one job right there and you don't know who's watching, who's going to see you, that's your opportunity. And a lot of times we get focused on who can I meet that has the biggest pockets? Who can I meet that can connect me to so and so? Who can I do this? Who can I do that? But if you become that power source, that energy source, that uplifts, that empowers, that inspires, then the game And as I close, I want to say this, uh, this one story. And the son, he did everything that he was supposed to do in college. Got good grades, graduated in four years, had the right friends, got a job after college. And he wanted this car. He wanted a car, he wanted a Corvette. Y'all know where the story is going. He wanted a Corvette, he wanted a vet. And uh, he told his dad that, and his dad was wealthy, so he said, Dad, come on, you hook me up, come on, look out. And so the great graduation event comes. Everybody's patting him on back, telling him how good he's going to do and everything the next. And then his dad gave him a book. He was like, bro, a book? And let alone it was a Bible. And then I was like, what in the world? Like in his head, he's like, I did all this stuff. I did everything the right way. I listened. I did everything I did, everything you said to do. I connected with the right people. I got good grades. I got the job. In my last day before I leave to my job, you give me a Bible. He didn't talk to his dad for the next 20 years. And then he got a call one day from his mother. You know the rest. Your dad had cardiac arrest, your dad passed away. So he's going to the funeral and he hurt. He like, man, I didn't talk to my dad 20 years ago and he passed away. And then he saw the book. He's like, man, I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at this book. I don't know what it is. He looked at the book reflecting and just trying to just gather his thoughts and because he had to deliver the eulogy and it's hard to give the eulogy for a man you haven't talked to in 20 years. He opened up the book. He had a key and a check for the Corvette. So what am I trying to say? What does that story mean? What am I getting at? The opportunity is right there, right? But a lot of times that opportunity doesn't look like the opportunity we think. It doesn't look like that $50,000. We think the opportunity of $50,000 is the opportunity is those couple people around us. The opportunity is that I see, I love the community. Like, I've never seen a pitch competition that they like family. I, they taking pictures, they grabbing stuff. You think they're the best friend, they ain't think they ain't competing. I'm like, this is great. I'm like, that's huge, right? I'm like, seriously. But that opportunity was something that they didn't, they didn't know it looked like. And a lot of times, our opportunity is the no's. Our opportunities are the rejections. Our opportunities are the person that does not fit the profile of a funder or somebody that can be of influence, and they are an admin assistant to somebody that is, right? And if we keep overlooking that book, we keep overlooking these opportunities. We keep overlooking these people that we say are not important. We keep overlooking the community that we seek to serve in Raleigh, because we know there's two Raleigh's, right? Let's be, let's be real. I'm, I'm sorry, they gave me the mic, so I gotta say it. There's two Raleigh's, right? Yeah. There's a Raleigh that's further innovation, a Raleigh that's growing and rapidly doing great things. Right. And then there's a Raleigh that many of y'all already serve that's not seeing that innovation. Right. That's not seeing this resource, that's not seeing this funding. All this money coming in, they're not seeing those jobs. So if we do not take advantage of these opportunities as a people, as a culture, we'll be wishing, we'll be waiting, and we'll be wanting forever. But I challenge you, and I wish I had my slide up there, if you can remember one thing or only, remember your genius. Remember you deserve, remember what you came through, remember what you survived, remember every single note, every single kid, every single story, and stay true to that. Regardless of the funding, regardless of the praise, you do anything you set your mind to, I love y'all, thank y'all for your time.